Okay, year two walkthrough behind the scenes, so to speak. Uh, lots new this year. Added uh, eight high def props, a uh, bunch of other stuff. Almost double the lights. I think uh, this one's up to about 23K in lights, give or take. Uh, also added a P5 matrix there in the middle. I'll explain the arch in a second uh, that's laying down on the ground, but um, just sort of a panel of the setup. And then uh, this is the mega tree. And right now, the way this is set up, I have four spots that I run guy wires, and I have eight, eight guy wires. Uh, two or one set of guy wires is in the middle. It's about halfway up the tree. And the second set then is right about here. It's about 12 feet. So it's about halfway between the midpoint and the top uh, with the star, I don't know, 19, 20 feet tall, uh, give or take, uh, with some room to spare. And I've taken them all out, um, but in another video, I'll show how I nailed these down. Uh, there is no base to this one. <laughs> Uh, pretty straightforward setup. I use 10 inch spikes and I nail these into the ground. And uh, like I said in the other video, you'll see a piece of that. And then I just have these orange uh, kind of hunter's flags up on the corners. Uh, I think next year uh, I will be putting some kind of a foam padding around those uh, pieces. Uh, but this year kind of left them as is. And uh, we didn't get too much snow. Uh, too often, so they didn't bury anything, so they were quite visible uh, throughout the day. So a quick run through. Uh, these arches, the triples, 300 pixels each, and uh, in the corners here are just rebar pieces that are down in there. I'll show in a second. And then in the middle, I use two 10 inch spikes just to keep the base from being able to be pulled out or off the ground or moved around too much. Uh, there's a single line it runs from each of these. It runs all the way up to where my controller is, and I'll get to that in a second. And the controller, so I think I'm running 24 foot line, 25 foot line uh, to the controller to run 300 pixels. So this one here, um, as you can see, there's a little gap between the houses here. This is where our wind comes ripping through, typically in our house. And uh, we had two or three different storms come through and I think we were upwards of 70 mile an hour gusts with about 40 to 50 mile an hour sustained winds. And this arch basically kept coming back and forth, back and forth a little bit at a time. And the rebars that were in the ground basically just softened up over time and it started kind of flopping a bit. It did not lift or move or anything because of the two spikes there, but it definitely bent the rebar out. So this one hit the brunt of that wind coming through. So I'm gonna to have to figure out a little bit different way of keeping this up next year. I had to reposition those rebars like three or four times. Uh, these are the um, kind of the medium trees. So there's 200 on the bottom and 50 in the star. And I ran eight of these across. And uh, there's a single line running to the whole 250 pixels again and that line just ran straight up to where the controller is and on the wall here i have my vertical strips and these are on two basically they're two pvcs um, bundled together on the back so i ran two pvc up and then what i did is i will be able to see it but at the very top, I actually have them sitting on two magnets and that's how they're attached to the soffit area. And this pole here then is bungeed down here so it can't sway too much. Um, it, has, it definitely has give to it, um, but it's not overwhelming and believe it or not, it held tight uh, throughout the windstorm. So, uh, I may change it up a little bit for next year, but it uh, seemed to work pretty well. Um, here's one of the real max, um, real deals, sorry. And the way these are attached is quite simply um, a P5 
pulley system here, like a strap here that runs through zip ties. Uh, basically, I zip tied it to the system at different points, ran the sheet across, and then just pulled it tight against the brick. Uh, that was mostly because I was in a hurry to get it up, and I ran out of PVC pipe. And So next year, I'll build some PVC pipe across the back, and then I'll run the strip through the PVC and pull it tight against the uh, brick. But for now, this worked really well. Uh, same thing to hold up the uh, square peg. So those were all held up there, pretty straightforward. Icicles, um, I've showed this before last year. They were on the same system of these magnets that held them underneath and ran across the soffit on the underneath there. Uh, once again, zero problems with them moving. Uh, I am, and I'll show in a minute, looking into bringing those out onto the gutters and I have some thoughts on that, so I'm working with something now, but um, hung the, these snowflakes up on sort of a PVC system. Those are just clipped into, might be able to see a clip there. So they're just clipped up into the soffit and kind of held on there. And I've had no problems with them moving or dropping. Uh, this is a two and two sign, and this is my P5. So the P5, I originally built this platform for it to sit on there. And I thought I had it fairly level when I was doing it. Um, and got it going, got it set on there. And then just used some eye hooks on the top to kind of keep it from being able to fall off of that. And just had it all tied up against the that big brick and some of the railing. But though it, clearly you can see the level was not even close. So then I came back out and I actually just put these pipes running up the side here and used some boards to level it, got it level, and then just uh, used three clips on this to hold that in place. And it held up really fine, uh, really well. So that was kind of my makeshift uh, and it used a level this time and got it nice and level and it worked out just fine. Uh, most of my wires running from there are tucked underneath the step there, which worked out uh, once again verticals and they're all on the same magnet system here um, and then on the garage this time ran the vertical and the horizontal um, and then the icicles underneath now here's the system i'm looking at for next year uh, popping these out using some gutter clips to run on the gutter uh, my fear is that these gutter clips hold but if that thing lifts you know, kind of flaps out, comes away and it blows out from the wind, the gutter clips can release pretty easily. Uh, they don't like really clip on per se. And so I'm looking at a way of tying those back just to give them a little support. And this is a makeshift one to test it, but I have a couple other ideas that I'll show next year in mind. This piece here that's up there is on a magnet the old magnet system. So I just run a, a line from that to the pixels. Now clearly right now, again, I just sort of threw it up there to test it. Uh, it's running through the strips. That's not how I would do it. I'll run it through some holes in the coro eventually, but, uh, but I think I like it on the gutters better. And that gives me some space underneath the soffit if I want to play with some stuff. And I think just an ease of setting up and taking down uh, the gutter system is a little bit easier, especially up on the roof line, uh, because we have these other decorative pieces that block space for being able to fit up and underneath the soffit. So I may go that direction next year. These carabiners here, um, I don't have them out, but basically we had hooks from here and I had this um, adjustable hook that would go to the top of my three singing trees. So they were just carabinered in uh, to the roof like that. And I positioned it because we use the left car a bit more than the right. And so there's only one you would have to move often, but they were turned out really well, actually. So we just basically did some quick unclips, move it to the side, pull the car out, put it in. For next year, I have a whole idea of a pulley system uh, kind of thing, like a trolley that will go up on the garage. Uh, I'm building that out right now. 
So hopefully, because um, I'm going to test it before to make sure it works the right way. But next year I could have a whole different system and that'll allow me to add a lot more on the garage and um, add a lot of flexibility for movement to get the cars in and out and make it real quick. So, okay. So on to the brains of the bottom half of the house. And that is my controller here. I had shown this build out a while back. And what you're seeing here is the completed project kind of on some stilts. Uh, I am running a Falcon F16 V4 and uh, two, um, two uh, expansion boards in there. And this year's show only really used, um, I don't think I used all the ports. I think I had, I'll have to look, but I think I used 32 of the 48. So I actually only powered on four of the eight mean wells that I have in there that were running at any given time. Uh, so there's plenty of room here to add more downstairs if I wanted to. I'm not sure where I could on the house, but... And then I built this little platform for this to sit on. And this was solely like if we get wind drift snow and everything in here, the, the box itself is not sitting into there because you can see the bottom of this box does have all the holes and I did not seal those. I could uh, very easily if I wanted to, but this seemed to be plenty. Uh, we don't get that much wind drift snow up into there and that's a good foot off the ground, uh, maybe 12, 14, 16 inches off the ground to get up in there. So uh, I wasn't too worried about it. And, but yeah, this held up really well. Um, no problems whatsoever. The way this one's set up is actually here. I would unscrew these pieces here and this whole piece pulls off and then this plexiglass will slide out and that gives you access, real quick easy access to the controllers when needed if needed. Um, I have one power distro in there that's all set up uh, but again not really needed uh, but it's just sort of there if I ever got to a point where I had that much pixel count downstairs. Uh, I could easily add plenty more pixels. I could probably add another 5,000 pixels down here pretty easily. Uh, and I have almost the same build upstairs on the roof, uh, but I'll go to that here in a little bit. Okay, on to the mega tree. So as you can see, I have this earth anchor here. This is an 18 inch uh, earth anchor. I don't even know if you can find these anymore, to be honest with you, but they're incredible. Um, I, th I throw uh, just this orange hunting vest on there, safety for people and cars and everything like that, especially when it snows. I have two <coughs> guy wires connected to this point here. And as you follow those up, one of them is about halfway up the tree, which is about eight feet, give or take. The other one's about halfway between there and the top, which is about the 12 foot mark. So I have eight guy wires on this guy and it's about a 16 foot uh, tree, give or take. Uh, here's the power box. So controlling this tree is an F16 with the expansion. Set up inside here, pretty simple. It's a V3, I believe, on this one, and uh, two power supplies. Actually, I have four power supplies. Uh, really, really overkill, to be quite honest with you, but it's the way I designed the box at the time. Uh, but it works, and I have plenty of outputs on here to run uh, more pixels if I really wanted to. I use that piece there to mount this box off the snow a bit. And then new this year, I've added these little Velcro pieces to tell um, basically what number line it is and in what port uh, I'm putting it on. And then when I run that line out, I use the yellow on the end of the actual line to know where that's going to connect. Uh, the reason I chose these, I had duct tape and then I had these other plastic pieces um, right there, as you can see. The Sharpie wears off 
pretty quickly, plus they're sharp and they're kind of a pain and they get in the way. Um, trying these out, I literally rode on these, threw them in water, hot water, cold water, rubbed my fingers all over them trying to move the Sharpie and it did not appear that they left, so we're gonna give it a try for this year. Uh, and we'll put it away. Uh, many people, so I'm using the Meadow system, um, this pole system, it's worked very well uh, for this. And I've got a couple things I'm gonna change for next year, and I, I can walk through that in a different part of the video. But for those wondering on the base, um, many people talk about all these different bases and everything they can use. Quite honest with you, this tree's worked really well by simply taking the end of these strips and nailing them into the ground with a 10 inch spike. Um, every single one of these is just essentially pulled out and nailed. You can see one of the, them right there. I am going to go to a little different system next year and I will stop this video here in a little bit, redo several lines when I take the tree down and then just show a couple of the new ones that I'm gonna try uh, for next year. Um, a little bit different to give a little bit better tension and, and just better organization. But all in all, to be honest with you, the tree has functioned extremely well. Uh, stands up to, we had uh, one storm roll in with 60, 70 mile an hour winds for about three or four hours straight. Didn't even flex, wasn't budging, nothing. Uh, probably overkill, maybe not, but the eight guy wires basically have made this thing rock solid. As far as the pole in the middle here, um, down in here is basically the base for the Mato system. Uh, I have only buried that about 16 inches maybe, and there's only about 12 inches of cement. And the cement's only about eight inches wide. And the only reason I did that is for leveling purposes, uh, to keep this straight up and down, left and right and everything. So, but it's not very far on the ground. And so for those wondering, you really don't need to go three or four feet down into the ground and put a ton of cement and everything. Uh, it doesn't take much. Really the weight of the tree itself is going straight down on that. And so as long as your guy wires are set up really well, um, you don't really need the base to be uh, overly dug down deep into the earth or anything. So anyway, I will come back to this tree in a little bit when I uh, go ahead and kind of change out some of the base to what I'm gonna try for next year. And I'll take a video of those and what the setup will look like uh, for next year. Okay, as previously mentioned, I would you know, test a new theory for next year on the tree. So, I'm roughly at about just under 15 feet to the topper and then call it two and a half feet to the top of the star. So looking at about 17 foot tree. At the base, what I'm gonna test out next year is a two part system here. Basically, there's a strip sitting in the ground loose and attached to the bolt, these guys here. And then these are attached to the strips. Now I'm gonna put some uh, metal plates in here to give it added strength. This is just for demoing right now. But then this allows me to tension it down between the two pieces. And then these are just staked into the ground again with 10 inch spikes. And this was a system my buddy uses down the road and it has worked really good and allows much more ease for uh, spacing and everything. Um, don't have to build up a whole base or anything like that. And the strips are pretty taut and you can tension them pretty well down there. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for next year. We'll see uh, when next year arrives, if that's what I end up doing. Okay, up on the roof. As you can see, um, everything up here was, so this, this one here is kind of jimmy rigged up here because I can't, uh, I just really struggled with these pieces underneath and getting everything to line up. So I ended up 
screwing that in through the PVC pipe and into those pieces so they would move, but it doesn't look as good as it should. That's the whole purpose next year of looking into these gutters and then I can run it all the way out to the edge of the gutter line um, across there. Hanging all the props, I used um, this line, or ook or something like that. I can't remember the name of it. Um, I think it's like 50 pound or 30 pound line. Uh, just used eye hooks, put it on there and just hung the piece pretty straightforward. Uh, this one I did not tie back actually, uh, but we don't get the winds as strong right here. So I didn't have a problem on this side, uh, but next year I'll probably put one down here and just sort of tie it in so that it does give it something to not flap around. This piece here, the winds got to this one and twisted the heck out of it, but it held and it stayed here, so no problems. For these pieces here, I actually used these standoffs and just kind of screwed them straight into here and put it up and down. Uh, it was pretty straightforward. So I don't know uh, for next year if I'll change anything, uh, probably not but they worked really well. Uh, again, the wreaths are just hung. This place has like a little nook in here. And so this place was pretty straightforward to, to hang stuff. And none, the wind didn't affect any of these pieces. Um, so no problems. I did put these sandbags down on some of the cords in case these things blew off the roof. Um, the cord didn't rip from the controller. It would be ripped from the, uh, hopefully the core of or more than anything. Um, what I will say is uh, some of these runs uh, that I have in here ran as long as maybe 20 or 30 feet to the prop and then and, and then ran through upwards of 300. Some of these I ran 350 uh, per port with zero issues, no power injection, even on long runs. Granted, if you turn it on white and you have it at about 40, 30 percent, you can kind of tiny see it flickering, but not a lot. I was running at 20%. There was really no issues. Uh, and visibly from the street, visibly from the street, you really didn't see anything. Here's a similar box set up again. Um, this, I built these little stands off on the roof just to keep this up and off the roof again. And you're looking at about, it would take about a foot and a half of snow to get up in there. Uh, so. I monitored it to see how much snow we were getting, but I, I don't think there would be an issue. Uh, maybe next year I raise it up a little bit more. I don't know. Uh, I do have room that I can stand this up higher on. And uh, basically same setup, but this one actually has a door on here, which this was my second build and I thought it was much better. So this will actually open up. Uh, it's not, going to open now because of um because i have it on this right here and i have an eye hook back here and an eye hook down on the bottom so this strap has kept this from being able to wobble and did a really good job uh, there was no problems i made double the eye hooks up here next year just to have sort of a redundancy but all in all uh, no issues, no problems up here whatsoever. Again, uh, all the pieces are just hung and run across. Uh, this is in here. So this one, I did not uh, tie down to the back. And when we had our windstorm, this sucker was blowing a good eight to 10 inches off the window. So we quickly came out and I quickly threw a bolt underneath here against the um, window and then used this to tie it down. Um, next year, I'll just use a piece of the uh, string again to tie it down like I did here uh, to keep it so it won't flap too much. But all in all, uh, that's the setup. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, again, looking up underneath here, you can see these magnets. That's what the icicles were on. But like I said, I think I'm gonna go gutter next year across here and I'll use those magnets just to have it kind of stabilize the uh, uh, stabilize icicles so they can't blow out uh, and then just lift right off. 
this was kind of makeshift too uh, for the vertical here because I didn't realize that when I built everything and ran it, this vertical was blocked by the wood there. So I ended up just kind of bending it out from there, putting over. Next year, I'll probably move it a bit to the side and figure out how to kind of mount it against the side of the um, drainage pipe or something along those lines. Uh, but all in all, it, it worked out. And from the street, you really couldn't tell that it was bent out like that too much. If you're really looking at it, I suppose you could. But anyway, um, that's a quick overview of the setup. Uh, again, about 23,000 lights. And each of these I ran, uh, you can see I'm using up here, I'm using all of one F16 and all of the other ones. So I'm using 32 channels up here. I still have uh, 16 over there that I can use and then some power injection as well. And I only used four of the eight um, power meanwhiles up here. So there's plenty of power and plenty of stuff that I can add on uh, up here if I wanted to. Again, I'm just not sure what I would do. As a preview for next year's show, this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to try this out over the summer. We'll see. But bottom line is I have this bracket set up here with essentially a pulley system, or a poly system, sorry. And the plan is basically to put my props hanging from that piece there down in front of the garage and be able to then move them from side to side depending on which car wants to get out of the garage. So uh, time will tell. We'll play around with it this summer and hopefully this will be set up for next year.